Introduction to Air Conditioning Systems Refrigeration Principle In this section, we introduce the refrigeration principle. We know that air conditioners can adjust temperature and humidity. But how do they work? First, let's look at the principles of air conditioning refrigeration. We all know that a cup of hot coffee quickly cools when left at room temperature, but lukewarm coffee does not automatically get hot again, indicating a direction of heat transfer. For the same reason, heat in a room does not automatically disappear. To cool a room, we must transfer the heat outside. This is what air conditioning does. The picture shows the refrigeration cycle, which includes four major components, evaporator, compressor, condenser, and expansion valve. Whereas the medium in the refrigeration cycle is a refrigerant, refrigerant in the evaporator is gas-liquid mixture at low temperature, cooler than room temperature, and low pressure. Absorbs heat in the room through the evaporator, so the temperature in the room gradually decreased to set value. Meanwhile, the te temperature in the refrigerant increases, but is still relatively low. The heat absorbed into the refrigerant at relatively low temperature and pressure is difficult to transfer outside. At this point, the Compressor is needed to increase the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant, so the refrigerant radiates heat to the outside. After being absorbed and compressed by the compressor, the refrigerant steam becomes hot and pressurized. Then, the steam enters a condenser. The condenser facilitates heat exchange between the refrigerant and the outside environment. Like an evaporator, it is essentially a heat exchanger. However, there is a difference between the two components. The refrigerant in the condenser is a hot and pressurized gas, so the heat can be automatically radiated outdoors. In general, the condenser is installed outside. The condenser is equipped with a fan to facilitate heat transfer and improve transfer efficiency. In general, the refrigerant was used to transport indoor heat to the outside. After passing a throttling device, the liquid becomes low pressure and low temperature gas liquid mixture refrigerant. Then, the refrigerant enters the evaporator, repeating the refrigeration cycle. Let's review the refrigeration process together. A compressor compresses the low temperature and low pressure saturated or superheated gas into a hot and pressurized superheated gas to facilitate outdoor heat exchange. Then, the high temperature and high pressure superheated gas is condensed into a hot and pressurized saturated or supercooled liquid in a condenser. After a throttle, the high temperature, high pressure liquid release releases pressure, and the refrigerant vaporizes. The hot and pressurized liquid also absorbs significant heat, reducing the temperature of the liquid refrigerant. This forms a low temperature and low pressure substance in both gas and liquid forms. A refrigerant vaporizes inside an evaporator and be becomes a low temperature and low pressure saturated or superheated gas, and then absorbs heat from indoor air. The following table lists the thermal state changes in the refrigeration cycle. In the evaporator, the refrigerant is generally a liquid or gas-liquid mixture. In the compressor, the refrigerant is required to be in a gaseous state. At the compressor outlet, the refrigerant becomes a hot and pressurized gas state. In the condenser, the refrigerant changes from a hot and pressurized 
gas into a high pressure, normal temperature liquid state. After passing through the expansion valve, the refrigerant becomes a gas liquid mixture at a low temperature and a low pressure. 